Good day. My name is Gustav Temple, editor of The Chat magazine, and I'm here to give you some sound and practical advice on how to approach the royal wedding. I shall be assisted by The Chap's resident bounder at large, Michael Atters Attry, and he'll be approaching this from a CAD's perspective. Splendid. Hello. Prince William is about to get married. What are the implications of this uh, from a chap's point of view? How could the chap advise William for the whole day to go smoothly and calmly and in as sophisticated a manner as possible? The stag night. Now, Atters, where should the prince go for his stag night? Prague. Isn't Prague where all the footballers go and all the vul vulgar types? Well, we ruled out Prague, didn't we? So, uh, obviously, they're local. A stag night traditionally um, involves getting a tattoo, getting body hair shaved off, generally being humiliated and making a bit of a, a fool of oneself. I think the prince is above all that sort of stuff, so how about a nice quiet drink in his local? I think perhaps our local would make it easier for us to see him. I think here would be very nice. But his nice, local would be... Well, it wouldn't be here, would it, really? But, uh, <laughs> well, no, you know, but, you know, can we get there? Is there a train to Windsor from here? No. Local pub, tank yeah. of the veil, Marvellous. few chums, a couple of pipes. Yes. That should do it. Smoking air outside, very important. Well, perhaps being the prince, he'll be allowed to smoke inside. Oh, do you think so? Of course he will. On his, on his stag night, he can do what he likes. Really? Of course he can. God. The big question on the big day is what will Prince William be wearing to get spliced in to Miss Middleton? I don't know. Uh, no idea, thank you. My vision for the prince is to, um, to bring a bit of dandyism back into the mm. royal family. We haven't we'll seen that nice. for a while, we'll have nice we? Nice. Yeah. I mean, he's in the blues and royal, so he should traditionally wear a uniform, but that's a bit boring, well, isn't it? It is a little bit. Oh, you, can, you think you could pluck something else out there? That well, I was going to suggest yeah. perhaps you could start with a nice pair of kid leather oh, gloves. Oh, lovely. Now, this will immediately set him out as a man of fashion. You think? I think that would work rather you well. See? Can you see those walking down yep. the aisle? You know, his, his, well, his wife to be were thinking, well, this is a stylish man. Now, uh, is it tie? Is it cravat? Is it bow tie? Well, you see, I'd always plump for this cravat myself. Now, this cravat oh. here <coughs> is a silk cravat, Ooh. which would go very well with a morning dress, wouldn't it? Paisley. Traditionally, one should wear to get married a grey tie. Do we, want nice. to, do we want to see a man in a grey tie getting married? Okay, now, how does one get one's tie from this? So this immaculate state, See, modern the secret, technology, the secret modern that chaps technology. know about mm. is the Pifco portable tie press. Now that is portable, that is fully portable. Really? Uh, Let me show you how it works. Um, this is the press itself. And as you can see, it's uh, fully compatible with most uh, modern fittings, uh, light bulb fittings. So all you do is you plug it into the light bulb above your head. I'll show you on my own tie. Uh, like so. And this is while you're wearing it? While I'm wearing it. Enough. You don't have to take a tie off at all. If, you, if, you, if you're running Fremble. late, as you might be at a wedding, yeah. plug it in, try not to garrote yourself or stab yourself, and wait 15 minutes, and hey presto, a fully pressed tie. I mean, I pressed this tie this morning with this tie press. That is old boy, I've been thinking about the correct buttonhole to wear on the royal wedding. What is it? <sighs> well, I think, you know, an occasion like that should be something Vlumptuous and a beautiful perfume, something very spectacular. Venus flytrap. What about a couple of pansies? Grooming. What uh, should the royal approach be to grooming for one's, uh, one's wedding day? Well, uh, uh, it's going to be a little difficult with this wedding because uh, I'm afraid this uh, king to be has very little uh, facial hair. I'm hoping mm. that he might perhaps chat to his cheeks and get a little bit of whiskerage going, mm. I don't know. It would be nice if we could have a moustache at the wedding, wouldn't it? If he did have a moustache, mm. if he had the time to grow one, what, what would be the ideal style for, uh, for a royal moustache? Fu Manchu. Fu Manchu. It's, it's the long, the long Chinese, long one, Chinese one, yes. one. I'm yeah. not sure if he's got the, uh, the follicular power to cultivate one of those. Well, then perhaps mm. some good, good mutton chops then. Yes. Yeah? Some good Something chops. for his wife to grab hold of. Yes, yeah? exactly. Yes, Excellent. exactly. What about if we sent him a, a communique this afternoon saying, 
uh, stop shaving your upper lip, old chum, if you want to look, look civilised uh, in the day. I mean, you'd think he'd have the sense to do this anyway, but they're under a lot of pressure, aren't they, the royals? You know, what we can hope for is that he's being secretly growing moustache and appearing in public with some sort of protective snood, and actually on the great day he'll whip it off and there'll be a huge, great handlebar moustache there. Oh, good Lord. Hallelujah. The answer to our prayers. That would be wonderful. If the fellow had a bit of facial hair, because then he could, he could actually employ the use of the moustache snood. Because obviously on a wedding night, it's gonna, there's going to be a little bit of, how shall I put it? Uh, movement. Movement. Rough and tumblage. This is the Atter's Fortified Snood, the moustache protector or gauze. It uh, prevents kinkage and dribblage during slumber. Also, worn at a coquettish angle, it makes one look rather dashing. Would you not agree, Gustav? Not I think. think that would enhance anyone's wedding night. How would you advise someone to keep calm on a very special day? I find if I'm approaching any, any exciting activity, a cup of Lapsang Souchong blended with Earl Grey calms the nerves. What, oh, what do you think? A, a hookah. A hookah? Yes. Really? Absolutely. Yes? yes. And what, would, oh. what tobacco would you put in the hookah? Well, I, I don't know, a pomegranate? Now, we mentioned smoking, and we haven't discussed exactly what the prince should be smoking on his day of days. Now, being the prince, will he be allowed to smoke in the abbey, or will he have to stick to snuff, do you think? You know. We've come to the finest purveyor of tobacco products in Sussex, Catlin's in Lewis, to find out from Mr Catlin what the appropriate tobaccos will be for the royal occasion. Smoke when you can, snuff when you can't. Oh. Prince is special. Prince and is special. You now can that's, see that's from this, name, in case it? people at home have any doubts, oh, it is marvelous. just ground tobacco. As used by their late majesties, the kings of Hanover and Belgium, the Dukes of Sussex, Cambridge, and the Duchess of Kent. You take a little pinch. Should I give you a little measure? Please do. There. I'm going to have a little bit of this. We're going to have some of that. Have you got clean hankies? Uh, yes. You, yes. you may yes. sneeze. I, 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 there. I, I, yes. Block one nostril. Yes. Sniff it up and wait for the... Really fiercely, don't be the shy about this. Yes, nostril. take it and wait for the buzz of nicotine. <laughs> um, I say. <laughs> My personal message to William and Catherine would be um, approach this in as dignified a manner as possible, but also try and have a laugh. It's only a wedding after all. Should we send this to William as a, I as think a gift? I he'd be delighted, definitely. Yeah?